But as if having a placenta eruption just isn't bad enough, life decided to give me a good slipped kick in the crotch and oh man, I am sore. <laughs> How's it going? So today I am 17 weeks pregnant. Ever since finding out about the placenta abruption, every time I get to a new week, it's like a celebration because it's like, yay, one more week closer to viability. Before that though, it was like, oh, I'm only this many weeks along. I have so far to go, but now it's like, yay, I'm this far along. <laughs> but to start off with symptoms, since I always do with you guys, symptoms this week have been lots of really dark red or brown blood. If you guys watched my day in the life vlog, I will link it down below. You guys know that I went to the ER Tuesday night. Ever since Tuesday night, I've been having a lot of dark red blood or brown blood, except most of the day yesterday, I would say like around three, four o'clock p.m. yesterday to today, no blood at all. But before then, it was really dark red or brown, which is good because that means it's old blood. And I'm kind of like hoping that this is like healing itself, but I'll get to that when I get to other news. Along with the blood, I've been having some sharp cramps, but they haven't been anything that's like too serious or anything to freak out about too much. So I've not really been worried about them. It, they just kind of come and go. Like they'll hit me real hard and I'll hurt for a couple minutes and then they'll go away. So it's something I'm dealing with, but it's not something that I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm not freaked out over. New symptom this week and it started on Thursday. Holy cow, TMI, but it feels like somebody has kicked me in the crotch. Like, oh my gosh, my pubic bone, like the bone right down there, it hurts so bad. It's so sore and I don't know why. <laughs> but as if having a placenta eruption just isn't bad enough, life decided to give me a good slipped kick in the crotch and oh man, I am sore. It hurts so bad down there and it hurts in my tailbone too. It started with my crotch on Thursday and then Friday it was my tailbone. But I'm really kind of hoping that it goes away and that it's just like a growing pain kind of thing. I really hope that's just what that is. Like a round ligament pain, maybe it's associated with that. I really hope so because man it hurts and it sucks. I'm not craving anything specific this week so I've got no new cravings for you guys. I'm still experiencing heartburn. Thumbs this video up if you're not surprised that I'm still struggling with heartburn because I sure as heck know I'm not. Another TMI moment. Gosh, I don't keep anything from you guys, do I? <laughs> My sex drive last week went from a zero to now like a hundred. Like <laughs> it's been a uh, kind of embarrassing. I'm like, I miss my husband, but I can't, I can't. Even if he were here, I can't because I'm on bed rest and I'm also obviously since I'm on bed rest, I'm on pelvic rest, so I can't. But my sex drive is insane. It's really bad right now. I'm feeling like a little bit more than just baby flutters in there, you guys. It's not like a little flutter that goes across anymore. I can feel baby's presence almost all the time. It's not anything specific. It's not arms or legs or knees or elbows. It's nothing like specific body parts, but it's just this like general presence. And baby likes to hang out in my right hip. Which is really funny because Carly loved my left hip and McKinley was kind of always center. So all of my kids are different. <laughs> I can feel baby's presence there all the time. When I stand up, when I sit down, I can feel little baby movements even when I stand now instead of just when I'm laying down. I know that big movement is just around the corner. If I don't start feeling like big movement at 20 weeks, I know for an absolute fact I will start feeling it at 22 weeks. And I'm so excited because I love this part of pregnancy. Last time I updated you guys, on my weight I was 155 and my scale is either broken <laughs> or my body hates me because I've lost two pounds I now weigh 153 yeah um, I don't know why but this baby does not want me to gain weight and if you're subscribed to my channel and you've watched my other pregnancy vlogs you know because I've said this a lot sorry but I did gain crazy with the girls and I'm not gaining at all with this baby. I don't know if that's associated with the fact that I did lose a lot of weight after I had McKinley. And I will link that video down below because it's a lot to explain. But I did lose a lot of weight after I had her. I don't know if that's why <laughs> I'm not gaining a lot with this baby or if it's just this pregnancy and how my body's handling it and I don't know. I just know that I'm not used to it. I'm used to gaining a lot when I'm pregnant. I'm used to it being pretty steady and I'm not used to this. So when I got on the scale this morning, it was like 
what? That can't be right. That can't be right. I must have stepped back on that scale like five times. Like, no, no, you're kidding, right? Nope, the scale wasn't kidding. 153. It sounds like I'm complaining. I'm really not. I promise. I'm just shocked. And when you're so used to your body doing one thing and it does the other, I mean, it is kind of like, huh. <laughs> Okay, now to get to the other news that I have to share with you guys this week. If you've watched my Day in the Life vlog, then you know that I went to the ER Tuesday night. Well, I have good news. Instead of two spots in my uterus or my placenta is pulling away from my uterus, instead of two spots, there's now just one. And they told me that it's two centimeters long, but they couldn't tell me um, if it has shrunk or gotten bigger since last time. But I'm assuming it's shrunk because there's now only one spot. So I'm assuming that's like a sign of healing. And I'm really really hoping you guys just can't even know how much i'm hoping <laughs> that this thing is healing itself because i wish that i could be off bed rest so bad so i've been hoping really hard that this thing is just healing itself and by i don't know i'd hate to put a number 20 some weeks i guess i will be fully healed and i can resume life since i told you guys in my day in the life vlog that i would explain this i will explain the whole bed rest situation devin's job does require him to be out of town and really the only jobs that are available that devin could support us on he has to leave town so he can't come back he can't quit his job because we need him to have his job he has to support us we have to have a roof overhead we have to have food in our bellies he cannot quit his job and because he just started it back up again like a month ago from where he tried to go local and that failed because it wasn't enough money because there's just not enough money to be made in this area he went back and decided to go back out of town and we just can't afford it he's talked to me about this i've talked to him about this we both are in a hundred and ten percent agreement that he cannot quit his job as far as family goes everybody in our family they have jobs so because everybody in our family works nobody is able to be here with me 24 7 to help me be on bed rest it's not an option and as far as my family goes my family lives six hours south in kentucky and they all work and they all have jobs so i just do the best that i can and i've made a lot of shortcuts in my life and i just do what I can do. And obviously it must be doing some kind of good because my placenta abruption is starting to heal itself. So we are getting so close, you guys, to finding out if this baby is a boy or a girl. So close. So just to give you guys like a little timeline, in about three, maybe four weeks, we will be shooting the gender slash name reveal video. I'm so excited. I can't wait to shoot it. And it's coming up. It's on the horizon. So I wanted you guys to be aware of when that's coming up. While we're on the topic of baby's gender, we have a baby name figured out. We finally figured out our boy name. We still haven't figured out our girl name, but we have our boy name figured out. And this is what's so weird. Let me just tell you guys this weird little tidbit of information about me and pregnancy. Pregnancies. Um, when I was pregnant with the girls, I had such an urgency to have a girl name before we even got to the anatomy scan. It's like this very urgent, we have to have a girl name feeling. And I wasn't so urgent to have a boy name when I was pregnant with the girls. And they both ended up being girls. With this baby, I have this really urgent feeling to have a boy name, but not an urgent feeling to have a girl name. Now I am not saying that I know that I know that I know that this baby is a boy because I certainly don't. I have no clue. Baby could be a girl for all I know, baby could be a boy for all I know. As you guys know, if you're subscribed to my channel and watch my vlogs, I have like no mother's instinct. <laughs> that like, oh I just know what baby is feeling, yeah I don't have that. It's awful. I just don't have it. I just thought that was an interesting piece of pregnancy information to share with you guys. In my last pregnancy vlog, I told you guys that I would talk about breastfeeding, so I'm going to. Um, I do have plans on breastfeeding this baby. However, if this baby has VLCAD, which there is a very, very good chance that baby does, I will have to supplement with formula. I don't really have a choice. I tried to exclusively breastfeed McKinley, and she did not gain weight. She stayed in the 10th percentile for a while, and so because her pediatrician wasn't concerned, I wasn't concerned. But then she dropped and she went from the 10th percentile, which was normal for her, to the third. And at five and a half months old, she only weighed 11 pounds, three and a half ounces. So I was like, oh, okay, um, yeah, we're gonna have to start supplementing formula. So because I've had that experience with McKinley, I just know that my babies do not do well exclusively breastfed because their bodies don't absorb carnitine very well. They just have to have that extra nutrients from formula. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a supplemental nursing system. It's this bottle with a tube that comes out of it and you just hook it in baby's mouth and I'm gonna have to just try that um, supplement while breastfeeding I'm gonna have to do both 
Okay guys, now I want your opinion because this is something I've been thinking about doing and since you guys are the ones that watch my videos, I want your opinion. If you liked the Day in the Life vlog and you would like to see more of those types of videos, leave me a comment down below. I want to see what you guys think. I've always been a little bit um, iffy about doing Day in the Life vlogs because I'm a stay at home mom and I'm on bed rest and my life just isn't like crazy amazing exciting. But if you guys like them and you like watching them and you like seeing how the girls interact with each other and what their relationship is like and how I manage to both be on bed rest and take care of two little girls at the same time. If you guys like watching that, please tell me down below in the comments and I will certainly do more of them. And I will probably do another day in the life of vlog this week just to like test it out and see how it goes and if you guys like it. Now I'm going to show you guys a belly shot but of course I can't stand up but I did take a picture so I will show you guys my picture. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys want to follow my social media, I have links down below in the description bar so you can check those out. And I will see you guys in the next vlog. Bye.